So at the start of every F1 season, there's large amounts of excitement, lots of intrigue and plenty of the unknown. And for 2022, all of those things were multiplied many times thanks to the new regulations that were being introduced. But despite all those changes, something that remains constant for everyone is wanting to be right at the front. And for all the teams, there's nothing better than winning the constructors. Well, I say all the teams, I can think of one that might have their number one priority elsewhere. But still, the ultimate goal for everyone is to be at the top, and I'd say for four or five teams, the realistic goal is to be winning it all. And one of those teams is Mercedes, who at this point, given the success they've had in the past, almost have the external expectation that they'll be winning, and if not, they'd at least be bringing a car with the potential for titles. They have Toto Wolff in charge, and a great lineup of seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton, plus star of the future George Russell, not to mention the abundance of high-quality staff and state-of-the-art facilities back at the team's base in the UK, where each year they put together designs for their F1 challenges, but for 2022, with a car that's as disappointing as PSG in the Champions League, it's fair to say it's gone a bit wrong. Hey guys, it's Taran and welcome to the On Track channel and to today's video. Before we get going, do make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more F1 content. With a variety of videos, I'm sure that there's something you'll enjoy. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video, and is the 2022 F1 season a total failure for Mercedes? So to set the scene, for the past 8 years Mercedes have been the team to be. You know, to say that they've been the powerhouse of F1 would almost be an understatement. From 2014, they've picked up every driver's and constructor's title, well, almost every driver's title, after they were beaten by Michael Massey, sorry, Max Verstappen, in 2021. And for anyone that wants to say I'm just being a salty Lewis fan, just remember I'm choosing to make a video about how badly they're doing. But back to the success, and to start the hybrid era, it was back-to-back -back titles for Hamilton in 2014 and 2015, with Rosberg beating him eventually in 2016. But in all three of those seasons, the team were untouchable, winning the constructors by an average of 290 points. I mean, it was a different time back then, like Williams finished third in two of those years, but you get the point. And even after a regulation change at the end of 2016, they were still on top. Admittedly, it was closer than it had been, with Ferrari putting up a fight in 2017 and 2018, before their engine power and subsequent performance dropped off a cliff due to completely legal reasons. And with Ferrari back in the midfield and Red Bull not quite back at the top, they took the 2020 trophies pretty easily, with Lewis Hamilton getting his seventh driver's title and the team winning their seventh consecutive Constructors' Championship which, despite their best efforts, was something that even the great Schumacher-Ferrari combination couldn't do. So up until that point, everything had been pretty plain sailing. No, that's not the right description. It was complete domination. But in 2021, things did change. And I've got a little theory for how it ties into this year and their struggles especially, which I promise I'll get to in a bit. You see, after the COVID-19 pandemic pushed the new regulations back, some changes were made for the 2021 season, which not only cut down the downforce on the cars, but also cut Mercedes' lead at the front of the field. As in the words of Toto Wolff, when it came to managing the effects of those changes, they misjudged them. And while they managed to squeak out the Constructors' title, Lewis Hamilton missed out on what would have been a record-breaking 8th World Championship. Which then brings us on to 2022, and a season that when it comes to the Silver Arrows, in the words of Martin Brundle... No, I haven't been this disappointed as in Shrek 2. But what has their season looked like? Well, we'll start with the opening round of the season and the Bahrain Grand Prix, where for the vast majority of the race, both cars were running in 5th and 6th, after qualifying had them starting in 5th and ninth place. But the real concern was the lack of pace, as before Pierre Gasly's car became a fireplace on wheels, the Mercs were running around 40 seconds to a minute behind the leaders. But at the end of the race, they eventually finished third and fourth, courtesy of Red Bull, who had cars with the same ability to finish as Timo Werner. Then, a week later, it was onto the Jeddah Corniche circuit and the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, where the only thing worse than Lewis Hamilton's weekend was the staging of the event entirely. Come qualifying, while George Russell was able to get his car into fifth place, in the other Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton was knocked out by Lance Stroll in Q1. And then in the race, it didn't get too much better, as despite some good pace at times, a combination of starting low down, safety cars and getting stuck behind drivers, meant that he finished in 10th place. Which, when you consider only 12 cars completed the full race distance, yeah, not great. Though it must be said that George Russell did finish P5 behind both Red Bulls and Ferraris, which made it clearer that the Mercedes was still pretty much the third best car. Next up was Albert Park in Melbourne and the Australian Grand Prix, which in a way was kind of like Bahrain as they were most definitely at best the third fastest team, and throughout the race were generally running behind the front runners. though this time, for a lot of the race, they had the McLarens for company, along with some Sergio Perez, if due a little to the safety car. And for a result, they were on the podium again, with Russell collecting third and Hamilton picking up fourth, 
but like Bahrain, they were helped out by Red Bull with Verstappen's car failing again, elevating both cars by position, not to mention that Sainz's Ferrari was out of the race by lap 2. And then finally, we have Imola and the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. I'd give the weekend its full name, but I'd also like to get this video finished sometime this year. Back to the track, and once again, it was a pretty concerning weekend. Okay, very concerning. And here's why. To start with, qualifying was poor, both cars out in Q2 and both really struggling to get any set of tyres working well. Then in the sprint, neither driver really made progress, in fact Hamilton actually lost a place, down from 13th to 14th. And then you have the race. I'll start with the positive, because let's be honest, they're few and far between in this video, and that positive is George Russell, who managed to come home in P4 and drove very well, showing in the right conditions the car can actually be good. Actually, it can be okay, it's still a mile off the Ferrari and Red Bull. But even with the good finish, a lot of stuff had to happen, and I mean a lot. First off, lap 1 incidents. Sainz and Ricardo collided, effectively removing both of them from the race, and that crash held up Bottas a bit, allowing Russell to pass easily. And then when into the race, Bottas was also held up for 8-9 seconds at the pit stops, so given he finished half a second back, may well have been ahead of the Mercedes if he had a cleaner race. And then of course there was Charles Leclerc, who tried turning his Ferrari into an aeroplane, taking off over the kerbs and ending up in the wall, the resulting pit stop dropping him behind Russell. So while he did have a great race himself, and in tricky conditions, plus an issue with car balance, it's still perceivable that he could have been down somewhere in like 8th place had some things not gone his way. Take nothing away from George though, it was still a great drive. And then we have Lewis Hamilton, and what has to go down as his worst race for quite some time. Poor qualifying, poor sprint, poor race, and an eventual finish of 13th. Though I can think of some other sports teams that would give quite a bit to be 13th right now. But the result really showed just how much they're struggling, and the concern will be that there doesn't look to be much progress being made across those first four races of the season, especially compared to say McLaren, who at the start of the year were running 15th to 20th, but now look to be up towards the sharp end, and potentially even ahead of the Mercedes team. So when we look at the W13, what are the real problems? Why is this car the worst that Lewis Hamilton has driven since 2009? I mean, I could just say everything, but then this wouldn't be much of a video now, would it? I'll start with the big problem, the one that gets talked about at every race weekend, and that is, of course, porpoising. The effect that turns a multi-million dollar F1 car into the world's most expensive bouncy ball, and out of all the cars on the grid, it's worse for the Mercedes. For those that aren't already aware, the effect is caused by the car being sucked to the ground, followed by the downforce stalling out and the car bouncing back up again, and then this cycle repeats itself. And the area in which it becomes a real issue is under braking, because going in, what you want is a nice stable car with consistent downforce. And well, in this area, it's safe to say the Mercedes has all the consistency of Nicholas Latifi, in the sense that it's consistently bad. I mean, the poor poisoning itself isn't the worst thing, look at Ferrari, their car bounces around on the straights as well, but the key is that it settles down into the corner. But when the car doesn't settle, there's no confidence for the driver that they can push the car into the bend. Not to mention how when it comes to turning the issues around, the team's doing as well as the New York Jets franchise, and by that I mean getting nowhere as whenever the team is asked about the problems, it's a case of understanding the issues, or learning about the car, which while yes, needs to be done, it shows that the team themselves just don't understand what's causing the issue and what can be done to fix it. And let's not forget, there's a host of other issues as well, take the straight line speed. While the team aren't ridiculously slow, they most definitely aren't quick. And while it's been said that it's down to drag as opposed to engine issues, it's still slow. You know, Man United can blame their poor season on conceding too many goals rather than not scoring enough, but that still doesn't make it any better of a campaign. Plus another thing is that everything points to the car having a fairly small working window along with pretty poor tyre warm-up, which then becomes an issue in qualifying and makes it very tricky to get good laps in when it really matters. Now here's where my theory comes in, and before anyone starts getting all technical, this is just some food for thought. So in 2014, we had the big regulation changes that brought in the turbo hybrid engine systems, along with some aero changes, but the big point was those engines. And I don't think anyone in the F1 community will tell you anything other than Mercedes absolutely nailed it. And that was what ultimately got their success going in 14, 15 and 16. But since then, we've had three regulation changes, all revolving mostly around aerodynamics. In 2017, we had changes designed to make the car faster, then as previously mentioned, there were the changes for 2021 to reduce downforce, and finally a complete overhaul for 2022 to allow for closer racing and to make it easier for cars to follow. Now first things first, Mercedes are good at designing F1 cars, you don't win as much as they have without being good. But when it comes to aero, and especially getting out of the blocks, maybe they're not quite as good as we think. Again, just something to think about. In 2017, they went from being well out ahead of everyone, to generally being the top car, with Ferrari normally just behind. Then again, aero changes for 2021, and they went from being the best car, to sharing that with Red Bull, and arguably over the course of the season, being second best. 
And then finally for 2022, they've gone from the top car, maybe just second, to be at best third, now maybe fourth with McLaren doing better. All I'm saying is this is now the third straight aero-based regulation change where in the immediate season following said change, their pace relative to the field has got worse. I've no doubt they'll improve as 2022 continues, but maybe their position shouldn't be as much of a surprise as it is. Now, while they're obviously not where they would like to be, there are some things to take away from the year that might give some hope. First off is George Russell, as through the first few rounds it's clear he's doing well, as he's finished ahead of Hamilton in 3 out of 4 races and generally pace-wise has been there with his teammate. And then secondly, while Hamilton has had a couple of blips for results in Jeddah and Imola, on the whole, the team has been picking up as many points as they can. Other than the 10th and 13th just mentioned, the team has two third places, three fourth places and a fifth place finish. Which when you consider that theoretically there's at least four cars that should be finishing ahead of them is pretty good. But with all that said, when it comes to deciding if 2022 is a total failure for Mercedes, I have to say that it is. You know, when all you're used to is winning and your internal expectation is to win as a team, you have to say they're not even close. Of course, given the regulation change, things would shuffle, but anything less than competing for wins has to go down as a failure for Mercedes. Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Also, some of you may have noticed the potential new thumbnail style for the channel, so let me know your thoughts on that. And as always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and subscribe for more F1 content. But until next time, take care.